Merry Meet, everyone. Um, today I wanted to show you a couple of things that I'm doing to prepare for Maybon. Um, Maybon is coming up on Wednesday, the 23rd. Little frantic because I was supposed to get my altar. Um, I have a tradition where I change my altar on the first new moon after the Sabbath. Unfortunately, with Lunasa, because I was doing, because I am still doing 30 Days of Magic, um, I left the Lunasa altar up, and I was supposed to change it in the new moon of September, which was the 13th. However, I had a couple of friends that got married, so that did not happen. So I'm just now getting uh, finishing touches done so that I can switch out my altars. Um, so I wanted to share that. Um, this will be part of my 30 Days of Magic as well, which is going on on my Facebook. Um, I believe this is day 27. So, yeah, God, got to get a couple more in there. <laughs> um, I'm going to be coming down, I think, May on Maybon. I'm going to have my final craft for that. And so I'll just be getting it in to uh, finish off the season of Lunasa. So, yeah. Um, so, first things first, I've started my candle. This is my Maybon candle. It says Maybon in the witch's alphabet. I have um, Yara, the rune for the harvest or the wheel. And then I have the rune for, or the rune, the ogum for ivy. Uh, ivy in the ogum. Uh, stands for determination, change, and patience. So for determination, I saw that as the harvest. You put in a lot of time, a lot of effort, a lot of work to harvest. And since this is the second harvest, made sense. Um, change, it is the change of the season. It's the autumn equinox. So we're saying goodbye officially to the summer and ushering in the fall. Then we have uh, patience, which I see as balance, which is it's equals day and night. And really, that's what I focus on when it comes to Maybon. I know it, it's the witch's Thanksgiving um, for a lot of people. Um, this is the first year I'm actually going to be taking observance of that and having an actual kind of uh, Thanksgiving meal and, and doing a couple of things. I'm going to... Uh, set up a little ancestor altar outside with some food as well as making a as well as having I should say having a Thanksgiving esque uh, dinner in which I will we will be remembering those that have passed kind of a little taste of Samhain um, but also Thinking about what we're thankful for, I'm going to begin my Halloween tree, which is another craft that I will be making a video on, um, and beginning that, and really just kind of beginning that introspection. Introspection. I think that's a word. I'm sorry. It's super late. I'm so out of it. Um, but but beginning that inward workings. Uh, Sawin brings about the dark part of the year um, where where we kind of go within ourselves and we study and we use where a lot of people see it as a time to not craft to not work magic I I don't necessarily agree with that I just because crafting is so part of my my path but I, I think it is a time to be a bit more thoughtful about what you're doing as opposed to the whimsy that the light half of the year brings. Um, we also tend to start seeing the good folk kind of go into hibernation, so to speak, in a lot of cultures. Um, and I kind of believe that. I think the dark half of the year, you still have good folk out and about and doing their thing, but you don't have the wood spirits being as out and about. You don't have the water spirits kind of doing their thing as much. I, I just, I, there's certain aspects of nature that kind of go into withdrawal, so it makes sense that some of the good folk would as well. So, um, so yeah, I just, I, I definitely focus on the balance. Um, my altar is primarily, uh, white and black. 
Um, I have a picture to represent the season, uh, the Sabbath, and that this year is going to be white and black. I'm going to be making another video. Sorry, I looked away. Um, on, I'm creating, I create a frame every year, every year, every Sabbath for the seasonal uh, picture. So I'm going to create that and show that in a, in a video as well. Um, so it made sense today I went out and got the candle. The candle itself is white. It's in a glass casing and then I um, did the etchings with pens. Um, I chose gold and silver for God and Goddess. Um, again, representing that balance. Um, and the gold I have, and I really like how the gold showed up on here. I'm kind of bummed the silver didn't show as well. But the gold, I did the insignia for Mabon. And then on the back, you can kind of see the scribblings. That's my invocation for Mabon. Um, and I did find this online. It is not original. Uh, but it really spoke to me. I really liked it. Um, it says, Tonight we move into darkness, knowing the decline is a necessary part of life. Blessed be the season of Mabon, the beginning of of the time of darkness the night brings cold and introspection the death of the earth that is required to bring about the resurrection of spring so I really like that I think it really ties in with how I view Mabon um, I see it as acknowledging both the light and the dark and seeing the necessity of both um, the light we really focus on because that's those are our productive times. That's our our time to be awake and working and being active and kind of enjoying life. And the night we go to sleep for most of us. I know I know there are people that work at night, so it's very opposite. But um, for the most part, we see the day as active and the night as inactive. And you need that inactive time. Um, you need that balance. You need rest as well as activity. You need work as well as play. You need that. Um, there's a 1980s, very, very 80s movie called Legend, which I absolutely adore. Tim Curry, dear Lord. Um, and he he plays the a very the the picture of the Christian devil, um, but he's a lord of darkness, and he's being destroyed somewhat. He's he's being like pushed into oblivion basically, and as he's being pushed into this nothingness, he's shouting out, you know, what is light without dark. And it, it's this beautiful monologue. I can't remember all of it, but that's that's the gist of it is what is you, without the darkness, you don't know what the light is without, you know, without negativity, you don't know what positivity is without the crone. You can't appreciate the maiden. It, it's that balance that we need to have without death. There can be no rebirth and no life. So Mabon is very special to me. Um, Sawin and Yule are my matron goddess hell's major times. Those are her sacred sabbats. But really, Mabon, I feel, is very connected to her because she epitomi epitomizes that balance of maiden and crone, death and rebirth. And I find that during the autumn equinox and yeah so I really liked that um invocation I thought it spoke to to me and I wrote that on the back again with Yara and the ogum for Ivy and yeah so that is my candle I am going to use my little metal skewer skewer and this is a soy candle so it goes in super super nice I love it do my four quarters. We've got north, east, south, 
and west. Normally I go in a certain pattern. I didn't tonight. I'm not sure why. Actually, I I kind of went wonky. I'm not sure why. I just kind of went with how it felt. Um, this is Mabon Oil that I made. I think it was one of my first crafts for my Lunasa um, 30 Days of Magic. I've let it sit for about a month. Oh, it smells so yummy. Absolutely love it. Um, we've got that. I've got my little dropper. And in the holes that I put in with the skewer, I'm just going to drop the oil in. The candle, by the way, um, I don't think I mentioned this. I think I started going into it and then I started rambling about something else. The candle I got at Target, um, it is black orchid and amber. And I really, I, I kind of looked, I wanted something that was ideally half black, half white. I really wanted that. Um, if and when I ever get stuff to make candles, which one day I'll actually make a candle like that for Mavon. Because again, that the balance is what really just speaks to me about this season. And um, so my hope is one day to actually make a candle that reflects that. Um, but Black Orchid... Um, I, I really liked, well, I love the smell of black orchid and amber. It, it, it really was a wonderful balance. Um, also amber is a scent I associate very much with my patron god, Kernunos. And, um, black orchid, uh, white flowers are usually associated with my matron goddess, Hell, by... Excuse me. <coughs> <coughs> I am so sorry. Sorry about that. I'm just getting over a cold and I've got that beautiful hacking cough. Um, but uh, Black Orchid, I hadn't, for some reason, even though I haven't read anything about orchids, let alone Black Orchids or Black Flowers really being associated with hell, it makes sense. White flowers are very, are, um, I've seen listed as, um, offerings for her and sacred to her. So it would make sense if white flowers are, why wouldn't black? They would both hold a, a very special place for her. So I, I thought it worked very well. It had both my, my lord and my lady associated, I thought. And it smells really good. It, it has that, it has that mature, scent and that sounds really crazy I know but it, it has that warming scent of amber but this very kind of dark scent uh, of the flower if that I, I know it sounds crazy but I don't know how to phrase it it just it smells magical to me and it smells like the season it has a bit more of a floral scent but it, it, it reminds me very much of, uh, there's a smell that I've always said it smells like Halloween. There's a certain smell when I was a kid trick-or-treating that was Halloween. And it, it kind of is that fa that autumn smell. The fallen leaves with the brisk wind with a little hint of bonfire in the air. This scent is very close to that. So I really liked that. And, and really... As soon as I saw it, it just clicked. It's like, nope, this is it. Um, and the candle, I think, was twelve ninety nine. So for me, anything over ten bucks, I usually go, nope, not happening, not this round. But candles, I'll make an exception for, especially my Sabbath candles. So I've got my oil in there. I'm gonna put a little bit more in because as it settles into the holes that I skewer in there, sometimes it needs a little, needs a little more to top it off West has more than enough but okay earth never seems to get quite enough in there all right so I've got that now I do I left all my crystals on the floor please excuse me 
Oh, please don't break. Okay. Sorry about that. Um, oh, I've got oil all over my, uh, oh, look, beautiful. So, um, normally I only use three crystals, but for this I am going to use four. And again, it's because I want that balance to be in there. So I'm going to use two clear quartz crystal chips. And I'm going to put those in earth. And west uh, to represent the feminine. Mm -hmm. Onyx. And then I'm going to use onyx chips. Two onyx chips, one in air, one in fire. Because for some reason that feels a bit more masculine, even though I'm pretty sure onyx is one of Hell's stones, but it. it I, I find in my practice, at least, a lot of times when I go, oh, this is this, or this is associated with this, or this corresponds with this, um, that first initial feeling, that gut instinct, that's usually what I go with, because I figure there's that spirit working within me letting me know, yeah, no, this equals this. Um, so yeah, at this point, the candle is pretty much dressed. That's what it looks like on the inside. See if you can get a little bit more there. Um, oftentimes I'll dress it with more uh, herbs on the inside. Right now, I I just kind of, I want it very minimalist. Um, I'm not entirely sure why. Um, I know right now I'm trying to pack up a lot of stuff. I'm trying to condense a lot of stuff. I'm trying to kind of move stuff out of the light into the dark when it comes to my altar and my um, my witchy supplies. And a lot of times that means a lot of access things get put away. So I, I'm thinking it's just that my inner clock is kind of going into that mode of, no, time to pull back, time to put things away. You can take them out again once, you know, it mulk starts. But um, I, I definitely have an inner clock that kind of lets me know, okay, pretty and bright things need to go away for a little bit. You need to focus on you, get very minimalist. And um, I find that com comes away with my crafting as well, whereas I'll normally do these big elaborate blends, especially for Sabbaths. I, my witchy sister-in-arms, Kristen, and I will get together to do something, and it'll turn into, okay, we've got nine herbs, and this corresponds with this, and then I've got three herbs that correspond with you, and three herbs that correspond with me, and then I've got three herbs, one for hell, one for Kernunos, one for Carriagewin, then I've got this for the elements, and this for the good folk, and... Uh, I, I love correspondences and I go to town, but um, it, it's, it's really odd. As soon as Maybon hits, I kind of slow down and I kind of go, you know, I don't need all this. I, I really focus on the intent of, of, of things and focus on my will producing the magic as opposed to, well, I need to have all these correspondences meet. I need to have all this creativity and all this inspiration in there. It, it just kind of is there, if that makes sense. And I don't think it's because I get frivolous in the light side of the year. I, I think it's just more the energy is so vibrant and so all over the place and you just want to do all of this stuff and because my mind is usually going from this to this to this to this my thought process is I need to have these correspondences in place I need to have all my I's dotted and T's crossed and let everything in the universe understand this is what I want because my mind could be flittery I might be thinking about 12 other p projects I have in the works and or it's just a simple thing of, I just feel called to do more correspondence-based and putting all these symbolisms and, and 
deeper meanings behind things. I want everything to have an association. I want everything to have a representation. Whereas, as soon as Maybon hits, I kind of go, you know, I'm just going to meditate about this. You know, I'm just going to take the extra time to charge this a little bit longer and really state this is your purpose, this is what you're for, and the universe is going to see you as such, as opposed to, well, if my intent isn't 100%, or if there's any confusion, you know, I'm going to put some extra rosemary in there so they know I want protection. I, I don't know why it just seems to happen with my, my practice. So, that is my candle. I'm going to do some charging, some meditating, and then tomorrow, hopefully, I, I kind of started switching out my altar as I'm looking about it. Um, I started packing some stuff away. Tomorrow I'm going to have to do a bit more, but I'm hoping to have um, kind of an altar tour for you. I haven't shown my altar on this, I don't think. I think on my Facebook I have a couple times, but I have it on YouTube, so it'll be my first thing, uh, my first altar showing. Um, and and I will kind of walk through, I know I, I mentioned to a few people, I, I would mention how I go about changing my altar. I do have a process that I go through, and I'll walk through that. I was going to do a video showing, and then I'm like, ah, you guys don't need to see all that. You guys don't want to see all that, I'm sure. Um, a few random thoughts that I did take notes on. Dear goodness me. Um... All of these are notes, just for the little candle. I, I like to... I totally just covered my camera. I'm awesome. Okay, so Mavon Info. Um, someone had asked me about um, crafts. I want to say it was Gypsy Spirit. Um, crafts, uh, spell workings, activities, things that you can do for Mavon. Um, like I said, some people do like a Thanksgiving type dinner. Uh, I am going to be getting... I'm going to be beginning my Halloween tree, as I call it, uh, where I'm going to take one of those little spooky trees, witch it up by putting a spell or two on it, um, <laughs> herbing it up, and um, then I'm going to be tying things I'm thankful for, things that I want to come to fruition before Samhain, um, honorings for people that have passed, people that are still here, and I'm just thankful for them, and am honoring them. Um, just kind of putting those thoughts out there that, you know, I, I tend to get caught up in a lot of things that are happening to me or around me, and I do forget. I've got amazing friends. I've got a wonderful guy. I, I have a, an amazing and awesome child. I have a family that has my back. I, I have so many blessings as things fall. Sorry. Um, I really do have some great things and I don't think I give it a, give any of them enough, uh, enough justice, enough. Dude, you're awesome kind of vibe. So that's what that tree is going to be for. Um, and I think any sort of honoring, or a thankful kind of ritual or ceremony or activity would be good. Um, some things I found online. Excuse me, I'm going to cough again. <coughs> Thank you. Um, my phone doesn't have a pause, and that's what I'm video recording on. So just as an explanation. Um, some things that I find on uh, I found online that you can do. Wine making. I have uh, some friends that actually make wine and beer, and I really want to do that this year. And um, I've talked to them about doing that. And unfortunately, they've been dealing with a lot of um, a lot of terrible things right now. They're they're really going through a lot of a lot of change and a lot of um, a lot of testing type of situation so um, I don't know that it's gonna come to fruition for me this year but 
if you have the opportunity, I think it would be awesome. Um, gathering dried herbs, always a good time. It is a harvest. It's the second harvest, so we do still have time to keep doing it. Um, scattering herbs, scattering offerings, I think is what it's supposed to be, to harvested fields. So, you know, once we've harvested from an area, we, we should be thanking the area for that bounty. Um, I know whenever I go somewhere, I bring some sort of nut along with me. Um, bread. Bread's a little less cool, but, I mean, <laughs> cranberries. Um, if you leave herb mixtures, I know on my grandfather's grave, I'll bring uh, herbal blends that I make, kind of like incense. Please make sure you're not using anything that could be poisonous. Like, I use mistletoe in a lot of incense blends. I will not be bringing those blends with me to the graveyard to adorn his gravestone because mistletoe can be poisonous. Um, you is very much the same, although I think you, it's more if it's burned, it can cause hallucinations, but I, I still don't want to chance things. Um, I, I Lilies are another thing. I know I had a friend whose cat's ate a, some day lilies or something and it almost killed them so just really be cautious about what you're leaving out as offerings to make sure that mother earth's you know our, our fellow creatures aren't getting hurt by it um oh, it's getting herbs offering light offering libations to trees um especially if you create relationships with trees. I, I've heard some amazing and wonderful stories. I do not live anywhere near woods. Um, so I, I don't really have... No, that's an excuse. I, I don't have any current relationships with trees. I really should do that. Um, I know there's this one tree by here. There's a park not too far away, and I just absolutely love the tree. I'm always drawn to it. I've taken several pictures of it. I really should leave um, offerings for it and just kind of commune with the tree spirits. Uh, also, burial sites uh, adorned with leaves, acorns, and pine cones. I know for Samhain, I hear, I hear of a lot of people who will half apples and leave those apple halves on um random grave sites, especially ones that, you know, maybe don't even have a name. Maybe it's just a little marker. Um, you know, leave people that you don't know. Let them know they are remembered. Let them know that they are thought of. I, I, I if I go into too much detail, I'll, I'll go off on a tangent because that really speaks to me. So that, that's an idea. Um, Types of spells that are really popular to work right now, uh, protection, prosperity, security, self-confidence, harmony, and balance. And again, I didn't, I, the couple of websites that I have bookmarked didn't say this, but anything that's honoring or thanking, I, I think is just such a huge feeling right now. So yeah, so that's what I got. Um, visiting apple orchards also, huge, huge thing. So yeah, that is what I've got for this video. I'm sorry it's already like a half hour long. I thought it would be a quick one. Uh, thank you so much for watching. If you like this, please like and subscribe. And as always, blessed be. Have a good night, guys. Bye.